and welcome back to the channel. I'm on my local patch today, down at Roadford Lake in Devon. We're gonna be doing some macro photography, quite early morning, nice and bright, and it's supposed to be quite warm, so we're hoping for a lot of insects. And there's been a bit of an explosion of butterflies in the last couple of days. It's been quite warm after about two weeks of rain. <laughs> so, I'll take you through the basics of macro photography, how to get some really stunning close-up images. I'll take you through my setup, the setup that I use. We've got a really good wildflower meadow, lots of birdfoot trefoil, lots of thistle in flower. So it should be good. It's just warming up a little bit now, so We'll have a walk around, see what we can find. So I've just found a sleeping bumblebee on this thistle top here. It's covered in dew. So as soon as he warms up, dries off a little bit, he'll be off nectaring on all these lovely thistles. It's not often you see a Sleeping bumblebee. Fantastic. So what is macro photography exactly? Well, it's a genre of photography where you're shooting close up. So your subjects will appear life size or greater than life size, depending on the magnification of the lens that you're using. And it's a tricky thing to, to do. It, needs, it takes quite a bit of practice, but it doesn't have to be difficult. You can use any really body of camera. It doesn't really matter too much. Even a, a bridge camera can take reasonable macro photos these days. But ideally you'll have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. It all really comes down to the lens because you need to get that close to your subject. So there are hundreds of lenses out there available. You can use kit lenses, just normal lenses, but you're not gonna get um, as close as uh, you'd want to really. You can add to those extension tubes, which go between your lens and the camera body to give it a little bit more magnification. But ideally you want a dedicated macro lens. Now I'm using a Sigma, which is 105 millimeter, one to one. And when I say one to one, it's when, when you take the picture of the, uh, the subject, it will appear life size in the sensor or on the sensor. So you can get greater magnifications, two times magnification, but I think one to one is a good start. And the problem you've got with 
phot photographing so closely is you get problems with depth of field. So depth of field trying to get all of the subjects in focus. And because you're focusing so closely, you're always, you're always going to have a problem with, with light. Trying to get as much light in as you can. So it's a good idea to have a flash. Now I use a, a ring flash. This is a newer ring flash and they're not too expensive. Generally you can find them for under hundred pounds. Um, and it's a good start. It's not gonna, the output of the flash isn't fantastic. It doesn't give um, a huge output of, of light. For that, you'll need a, a speed light, which will sit on the top here with a diffuser, just to soften the light a bit. It depends on how close you want to go, really, because there's kind of two types of macro, just your normal macros, which what we've been shooting today. And then there's extreme macro, where you can get even closer to your subject. You can add a lens to the front of your existing lens to magnify it even more, such as a Raynox lens. But then your, uh, your depth of field is gonna become even more of a problem. <laughs> Focusing is a bit more of an issue. So with our setup, we're shooting, say 105 millimeter Sigma lens. It's a fixed 105 millimeter prime. We're shooting manual focus, if you can, shoot on manual focus it it makes life a little bit easier because if you're shooting on autofocus at that range the camera does struggle a little bit to uh, to lock on now I'm using the Canon R7 which is a, a mirrorless camera and it does have fantastic autofocus capabilities has eye tracking but even that at, at close ranges it can struggle to lock on to the subject so I generally use manual focus and the flash I've got set to auto, also known as TTL, which stands for through the lens, which is basically just an automatic setting. And it's locked into the camera. So the shutter speed I've fixed, at, I think it's 320. 320th of a second um, and the flash knows knows that so what happens is when you when you take a picture the flash actually flashes twice very quickly it's hardly noticeable and the first flash bounces back through the lens to the sensor and the camera can then establish the the setup that you've got and the uh <laughs> Sorry, there's a hoverfly just buzzing right by my ear there. Um, so yeah, um, it, it's a completely automatic set. It's really useful because it, you can then just literally point and, and shoot um, and the flash will just do the rest. And the flashes are brilliant because they can actually freeze the, the subject as well. So it doesn't really matter too much about shutter speed. You don't need to go too high. You can knock the shutter speed down because the flash is, is doing the job for you. And all my shooting this morning has been handheld. So yeah, shutter speed, you need, to, you need it reasonably fast because obviously you need to eliminate camera shake, which is gonna uh, affect your, uh, your images. Um, so you need to keep it uh, as still as you can, which isn't always easy at that close range. You can use a tripod, and I have done um, for various scenarios, but um, generally I just shoot handheld, um, and it seems to work really well. I'm really happy with the uh, the images that I've got. So that's uh, generally it in a nutshell. The thing to do is is when you're focusing is to get your subject on in the frame and then rock backwards gently, backwards and forwards so you can get the, the subject in focus. And then if you need to, you can fine tune 
on the wheel. And just practice. That's really, um, that's really the only way is just keep practicing. But the rewards are absolutely, if you hone your skills, the rewards of macro photography are absolutely fantastic. It's, it's a brilliant thing to do. And if you're shooting insects, flowers, well, anything really, I mean, you can shoot raindrops glistening in the sun on the leaf. It's the art, the art is, is absolutely fantastic. And some of the images that you see are, are absolutely outstanding. And it's a great, great fun thing to do. So I'm shooting on Aperture Priority today. The light's a bit inconsistent. It was quite sunny this morning, but it's clouded over a bit now. So it's been on and off coming. The sun's been coming in and out. So Aperture Priority, and I've been shooting about F8. Um, between F8 and F16. But I can drop the uh, Aperture right down if I need to. And it's uh, been going down to about F4 when it's got really dark but the flash can fill in for that. And yeah, it's been set at about 320th of a second. So about, between 250 and 320th of a second is what I've been shooting at. And it's enough to get some sharp images at F8. So it's, it's quite pleasing. So I've just been staking out an area, small area, probably about 50 meters squared slowly walking around stopping it's a it's a whole new world out there right under your feet if you just look close enough the place is absolutely alive with insects butterflies hoverflies bees it's incredible you really if you get down get down on the ground look close enough it's another alien world in there it's brilliant absolutely fantastic so yeah, I mean, even if you just sit quietly and let the insects come to you, that's often a good way to do it. A little bit of patience, a little bit of perseverance. And it's amazing what, what you can turn up. Fantastic. So there we are, I hope that was useful to you. Only the basics really today, just to get you started. So if you've got any questions, just please leave them in the comments. I'll always get back to you. And we'll do some more macro soon, very soon. We'll try and get uh, a little bit more advanced. So hopefully we can do that soon. But thanks ever so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks again.